There are roughly half a million children in foster care right now, and approximately 120,000 of those are up for adoption. May is National Foster Care Awareness Month, and we want to talk about it because this topic is close to home for our next guest. He is very special. He's a nationally known radio host, a motivational speaker, and a best-selling author and just a really good guy. We want to welcome to the show Willie Mo Jr. here. Thanks for being on BNC, my friend. Good morning to you. Man, good morning to you guys. I'm so happy to be with you. Yeah, happy to have you. Man, hey, you lived this, man. You were adopted at the age of three months uh, by a couple you lovingly refer to as your, well, let me say it, forever parents. Uh, how have they shaped your life? Yeah. You know what? Being adopted by two amazing ex-sharecroppers, right? Uh, my dad is 89 years young. My mama, she's been 35 the last 35 years. Black don't crack, beige don't age, right? <laughs> But, uh, she likes sharing. You know, it's just been amazing. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, it just doesn't age. But it literally was the most amazing opportunity that the creator could ever give a child like me. You know, they didn't have a whole lot of money. They didn't have a whole lot of wealth, but they had a whole lot of love. And literally, they didn't parent me with the trajectory of if you do it this way and you don't do it this way, I won't do this. They just did it with love. And I'm just so thankful. And I'm looking to give other children the opportunity to experience what I've experienced. Yeah, Willie, you are a testament to to your mom and dad, your, your forever parents. Um, you had a meeting with another lady who we love on this show, Iyanla, Iyanla Van Sant. Um, and you made yeah. a course correction, if you will, a change. What did Iyanla say to you? You know what? She questioned me, right? Like, I'm a guy in the inspirational world to seemingly have it all together. Mm -hmm. But she asked me a question. She said, how do you think that you are just okay and you've never met anybody in your biological family? And I never thought about it wow. because the truth is I was so excited to have my forever family that I never really thought yeah. about even meeting anybody in my biological family. And once she asked that, it pricked my heart and I discovered, uh, I went on a journey to discover who my biological parents were. Wow. Yeah, and that's what, what we're getting to right now because we, you had a documentary, you got a documentary out called uh, The Missing Piece, where you go on a journey uh, to find your uh, your biological family. Let's take a look at a, a quick preview of it. How did you think that being adopted and never having met your biological parents, that you was okay? Like, what did she look like? What was her name? Did she ever think of me? I opened the birth certificate and I, you know, I, I get it. And I look at the name for the child, and I realize that I did not have a name. Although she had refused to meet me, I wondered those things. But in 2019, I received word from the adoption agency through an email that my biological mom was dead. It's wow. wonderful. I can't wait to wow. see that. Uh, it's been great, and I've been following <laughs> you for a long time. Yeah. But you did mention that at first your biological mom didn't want to see you. How, how painful was that? You know, that was 2009, and the truth is, that particular day, I was actually supposed to start this amazing organization called Young Fly and Save. And so I got the news at 4 o'clock that she refused to meet me, and the guys were on their way at 6 o'clock. But I brought those guys in. I was very mm -hmm. vulnerable and transparent about how I was feeling at the time, and I continued to move towards the direction of, of this organization. It hurt. I cried. I broke down. But I kept doing what I was supposed to do. I often tell people, like, you got to be true to your calling no matter what happens in the interim. So... I kept moving, I focused on the ultimate, then focused on the immediate, and you know, today things are different, and, and, the, and the creator changed my story a lot. And it's great, and I'm glad you had that faith, because you know, like, it's a very small world, and, and I understand that uh, your yeah. biological brother knew you before he actually knew you uh, through social media. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you know, back in the day, he's from St. Louis, right? And so I used to go by the name of Pretty Willie. I was an R&B dude. As you can see, the pretty gone. I'm just trying to hold on to handsome, right? But my <laughs> brother was a fan of my R&B career. And, like, literally, I, I, they show me who he is. I go on Instagram, and, you know, if you go somewhere and they follow, they're following you, it says follow back. And so I'm, like, nervous to click mm -hmm. the follow back. And so I just watched him for, like, three or four months until I could mentally, like, uh, take him on. And so after four months... I got I got in his DMs and I said, hey, bro, I think I'm your brother. I would love to have a conversation. And from that mm -hmm. day, we, it, there has not wow. been a day since that day that we have not talked once we realized that we were both brothers. Wow. Wow, that gives me goosebumps. Um, 
You know, we don't mm -hmm. want you to give it away. We want people to be able to experience this, um, you know, mm -hmm. in real time as they watch your effort here. But what more can you tell us about the journey, the twists, the turns? Because it's never a straight line. Mm. Yeah. You know, man, you know, Sharon, that's such, that's such an amazing question. You know, although my story is, ama is an amazing hallmark story, I just understand that there are so many children out there who need the trajectory and the thought process of fostering to adopt to be yeah. changed because they're sitting, they're sitting there waiting on somebody to come for them. And so I think it's our job to be a voice to the voiceless. And so with this particular documentary short, it's only 36 minutes, our goal is to make sure that the 125,000 children who are available for adoption get the opportunity for the narrative to be changed. I think when they see this beautiful story, it's gonna reconcile hearts and people, specifically African-American people, are gonna to want to engage the foster care system to help children out like me. Hey, I retired my mother, right? She never has to work another day in her life. And so I'm telling everybody mm. across the world, listen, you could adopt mm. a willy, okay? <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, now it could happen. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. could, yes. Yeah. And so, and, and you know, we're almost out of time, but every day, I have a nine-year-old, my little Ava, and she says, mommy, I want you to adopt some kids, babies. You know, you were three mm. months old. You know what it is. There are a lot of people who have fertility issues, other issues, and they want to adopt babies. But there's so many other kids out there. Who are these children who, who need us? Mm -hmm. You know, right now with our partnership with Bethany Christian Services, it's the number one adoption agency in the country. I was just on a conference call with them on Wednesday. The bigger need is for the 23,000 kids who are about to age out of foster care, right? And so we've been setting up programs to make sure that they have funding, making sure that they have stability, make sure that they have the right education. But more importantly, we gotta make sure that these children have homes. Like we found that orphanages mm -hmm. are okay, but every child that has nothing deserves something and that something is a home. And so if you would like to engage with us, please mm -hmm. log on to the missingpeacemovie.com. After the film, we're gonna have some information and it's gonna be entertaining, fun, but more than importantly, just it's gonna be very educational. So you can learn more about the foster care and adoption system. Yeah, and the oh, location. Um, tell us about the location of the documentary if you can. So literally log on to the missingpeacemovie.com. It don't matter how you spell peace, all domains lead to the box office, okay? The missingpeacemovie.com. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna have a virtual showing. May 16th is Adoption Sunday. Uh -huh. Churches across the country are engaging, but I would love for you to be a part of this experience. It's a virtual theater, the last private showing before we take it to the big screen. So be a part of the thousand people that we're letting in, okay? All right, well, we just love you. And we want you we to just keep will. coming back because, yeah, your energy, your positivity, and the mm -hmm. mission here, we need to be part of it. Willie Moore Jr., um, and you're still pretty cute, and we love the hat, too. Um, thanks so much for out. starting your day Thank with you. us. Thank <laughs> you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, Willie.